Hello and welcome to the XRL European Super League highlights for week six. We are a, a bit, little bit late this week for the week six highlights and we hope you enjoy them. There are some absolutely cracking goals today. Our main game comes from Anfield between two of the table topping sides. Valencia again in the main game highlights this time away to Liverpool at Anfield. We also have games from four of the other games in the European Super League, including how table topping Napoli got on against Man City. A lot of goals in this game as well as how new manager LGS started live with his new team with Arsenal against Borussia Dortmund. Right, so let's get over to our game at Anfield between two of the biggest sides in the league occupying right at the top of the league in the top sort of two or three positions. Liverpool, managed by last year's champion I Love Jigsaws, is operating 4-3-3 in formation for this match against Valencia with Mingula and goal, Emre Chan right back, Martin Skirtle and Sacco playing at centre-backs with Pacey left-back Alberto Moreno playing at left-back. Felipe Coutinho, Steven Gerrard and Jordan Henson as a three-man central midfield with Raheem Sterling and Lazar Markovic on the left and right flanks. Up front on his own will be Daniel Sturridge. For Valencia, they are operating a very similar formation with only one change from the, their game last week. Diego Alves is in goal with Barragan, Mustafi, Otamendi and Jose Gaia in the defence. Daniel Perejo, Enzo Perez and Javi Fuego comes back in from last week. Piatti and Fagudi on the wings with Rodrigo up front, a formation which has served them very well throughout this season so far. Let's go pitch side with Jeff Stelling and get up to the commentary box with Alan Smith and Martin Tyler. Welcome to EA Sports live coverage of this matchup. Today it's Liverpool against Valencia. Let's head straight off to Anfield, shall we? Magnificent day on Merseyside, the sun beating down. Here's your comedy team, Martin Tyler and Alan Smith. Well, a good result last time out, Alan, and they'll want to play that sort of way against the big rivals today. I'd be hoping to, but it uh, doesn't always pan out that way, does it? That was then, and this is now. Good control here. Quite congested midfield, but good passing from this team. There's the ball in. Well defended here from a good cross. Right in quickly to try and win the ball back. Perez. Rodrigo. And he goes for the chip. Well, he tried to lob the goalkeeper, but didn't get the height. Well, he's a big lad as well, the keeper, and it's going to be a great effort to beat him. Coutinho. And he's gone and won the ball with a very good tackle. Abi Fuego. Danny Parejo. Oh, what a cheeky attempt. Good footwork by the goalkeeper. Got plenty of options from his teammates. Peguli. Possession's gone now when they had it for a while. Avi Fuego takes the shot off. Pushed back into play by the goalkeeper. That will be a corner. And it's a header. Jordan Henderson. He's got space. Here's the chance. He's gone with the outside of the foot. Perez. In with a chance. And that's the keeper's athleticism. Now they can use some width. That's a good pass. Oh, a volley. It's a goal. And it's Valencia. And what a volley it was. The keeper wasn't too far away, but it was far too powerful for him. It's a goal worth looking at again, isn't it?
Javi Fuego. And they're passing so well out there. It's a good chance now to cross. Cross coming in now. Sturridge. Oh, that would have been the equaliser. It's a big chance. At Anfield, the second half is now underway. Coutinho. The opposition back off, they could be in trouble. It's a chance, got to be. Made the save, but the ball's still there. Emre Chan. And it's passed back again. Steven Gerrard. And the cross is in. Keeping the ball moving, that's important. Otamendi. How frustrating is this for the other team trying to get the touch of the ball? We could be in. He's on his way now. Balotelli! A goal from Liverpool! Well, they were caught out here by this quick counter attack against the run of play. Yeah, I mean, they had to uh, stick together there. Come under a lot of pressure, but with the pace in the team, it was always likely. Tackle goes for goal, pushed back into play by the goalkeeper. In with a chance, it's a very good game here, a tight one. They're trying to get themselves into a position to take the lead. Henderson, Danny Parejo. Another opportunity wasted by this team. Otamendi. Final whistle's gone. And what a good game it was. It has finished 1-1. Both teams stay where they are because the game has finished level. And no gain and no real pain either for the sides. There's another game gone though. And one less game left to try and... Right, so that's our main game today at Anfield between Liverpool and Valencia. Obviously, two sides that have been doing really well in the league and, well, the result of 1-1 probably matched how well they've been doing this season. And in the box, we'd say, it's not Jay Pearce. He's uh, got a bit of a problematic mic. So we've got Stuart in, the v Valencia manager as well. So, um, Stuart, that is obviously a really close game. From your perspective, before we go into it, what was the? Do you think that was a good result for you? I mean, do you feel like you left two points out there, or do you think as a point game? Um, obviously, the 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 week before, um, this match, um, I'd, um, had my first defeat in what thirteen games or something since, all dating all the way back to last season. So, I was kind of it was a massive match for me because we're obviously a massive rivalry, me and um, uh, Jack, but. The draw, I guess it's good to get back with uh, picking up points, but looking at the game, I'm probably quite unhappy to not take the win, especially with that Fadula chance, as you'll see in the highlights later. But, yeah, I'll do. I'll do, I guess. So, yeah, as you say, uh, the draw was, well, you'll take the point. Uh, but both teams really had solid chances in the game. I suppose one of those fell to Daniel Sturridge in the first half, somehow dragging his shot wide, but a striker in the kind of form he is and has scored a few goals this season, you would have expected him to really put that one away. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's um, up there. With, I'm pretty sure he's a top goal scorer for Jack, so I'm quite surprised um, he's managed to drag that one wide. I mean, it's 12, 13, 14 yards out, and it's just the goalie and him, and somehow... On his strong foot, he's, he's dragged it away. 
That's right. And, um, well, he is left-footed. He did hit it on his stronger foot. He's a good enough rated player. He should have really put that one in, but he didn't. So, you know, that is his, that, apart from the goal, that was his main chance. But I suppose you had a couple of chances yourself of having, you know, a fair chance. And one of those was for Goody's effort right near the end. Do you, what, what was your take on that one? Uh, I'm quite gutted with that, to be honest. It's, it's very late in the game, you know, it's the best chance possible to, to win the game. And he's just it's one, another one and one and all I'm looking to do is put it in the, the near the near corner or what Figuli's looking to do. And he's, he's somehow dragged it wide, so I'll have to give him a little shouting in the dressing room because that was the chance to take all three points against my biggest rival. Yeah, that is true. Um, but we may as well look at the goals now. And, well, Pablo Piatti has had his fair chances this season. Uh, and he's not taken them. But this one today, there's been a few There's a few stunning goals, which you'll see later on in the highlights from the rest of the games. But this is one to definitely savour for him. And it's moved him up into the goal-scoring tally. Um, just a hit and hope for you, or was that the plan? Um, yeah, it was. The, it was a plan. As soon as I seen the ball drop back... Um, with the cross, I was ex I was actually expecting to put the the ball in the six yard area, but the cross dragged back a bit from Figuli, and had to hit it on the volley. It was inviting, and somehow, considering Piatti's misses in front of goal this season, he's managed to smack it right into the top corner, and I thought that was a very nice goal. Yeah, that that's right. It was. <laughs> It was one of probably about four or five really quality strikes in the league this week. Um, one that wasn't such a quality strike was Mario Balotelli's goal. I mean, how, are you disappointed in the way that it was conceded? I mean, it was just a pass over the face, which appeared like it could have been stopped because he had two players over who were marking him and he just got in front of them both. But were you trying to sort of protect that or were you trying to make sure that he hit it instead. Yeah, I was definitely trying to protect it. I mean, yeah, it was unlucky for me. I'm, I somehow, I have no idea from a defensive point of view how that's managed to get through to defenders. But all in all, I'd, it was our fault. With um, We lost it in midfield, didn't we, with a, a midfielder. I can't remember who was on the ball, but we lost it in midfield and it was a counter-attack straight away. And there were two on one with us and I got defenders back in the in the path of the ball. Somehow it sneaked through, and Balotelli's got an open goal. Well, that is how it finished. It did finish one-one, and it sort of represents how both of you are doing this season. You know, you're both doing well, and both of you probably didn't want to lose the game. So, a point. I think you'll both say a point earned is fair enough. Although, if anyone was to take it, it should have been yourself, really, on the balance of play. But. Looking at the league table, obviously you're both keeping up the chase to just like Senna, who is obviously doing very well at the minute. Um, do you see him being overtaken with Napoli? Or do you think you're the team that can do it? Or, you know, what's your general opinion on that? Oh, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm, I'm going all eight for the title. I mean, there's a good fight going on between a good four of us with um, me, Alexei, Jack and Senna, obviously. Senna's not lost yet, and um, yeah. he's looking in great form. I'd, I'm not sure how he's going to get beat by anyone else, so I'm going to just play my wins, play my games, get as much wins as possible, and hopefully I can beat him in week 10 and turn the table around, because I really want to win it. Yep, I think that's what's going to have to happen. But actually, speaking of Napoli, we're actually going to go over there. They're playing against Man City in the start of our shortened highlights games. So our first game of our highlights comes between Napoli and Manchester City. Napoli, obviously, right at the top of the table with Manchester City having a mixed bag of a season following their recent win against Chelsea. In the early stages, it was quite equal until Napoli found an easy way through. The defenders all over the place there, and just an easy through ball down the middle of the goal 
set Gabbiadini up for his first goal of the game, made it 1-0 to the home side after 19 minutes of the game. Just a few minutes later, Napoli looked like they were going to be threatening once again. Insigne running at Clichy. Clichy could not handle the pace of the Italian in this game. And Dries Mertens just got in between the two centre-backs again, allowing him... That allowing him to get through the centre-backs was pretty poor for Man City. And it was 2-0 within 25 minutes. This game was sinking away from Man City. A chance for Man City in the 27th minute. Wilfred Boney getting through on a one-on-one. -on -one, but dragging his shot wide of the goalkeeper. And really he should have put that in the net. As we got into the rest of the game. Just a couple of minutes later in the 30th minute. Napoli made Man City pay for missing that effort. And a goal from Insigne, again, just getting through the defence with a nice little through ball there, made it 3-0. It was 4-0 at the start of the second half. Dries Mertens getting through and an easy finish. And this game, Man City weren't too bad in this game. They didn't take their chances, but the home team did. They didn't actually have any more opportunities than Man City in the game, but they took them for sure. As we got into the second half, and just a few minutes later again, Man City struck. Wilfred Boney got onto the act and really should, this should have been his second goal in the game. But he got on, onto the tally and the first time for this season for him. Just just again, a few minutes later, about three minutes later, Napoli scored again. Dries Mertens 1-1. One -on his pace and dribbling skill got himself free of anyone near him. And he just easily finished. Hits the post and goes in on a one-on-one. -on -one. Joe Hart was very annoyed with himself there. As we got to the end of the game, Man City did actually get a second consolation goal with Wilfred Boney taking it on himself instead of passing it into the centre. And he doubled his tally for the season and the match. And, well, not really gave them a lifeline, but maybe gave them an extra goal than... Well, they deserve more goals than that, but it helps the goal difference out, or it did, until the last minute. And it's that man again, Dries Mertens, with his fourth goal of the game. So Napoli doing very, very well this season. They are topping the table and scoring a lot of goals... And they look very, very good this season. 6-2 to the home side in Napoli. Our second game comes between an all-Premier League affair. Chelsea at home at Stamford Bridge to Manchester United. Manchester United starting to pick up a bit of form recently. See UFC Ewan against Chelsea who have been hit and miss under Bobberts. Both very, very equal in the league table. A good chance early on for Chelsea there from a corner. A good header, but just over the bar. In the, as the first half progressed on, Michael Carrick found himself in a bit more space in the midfield, trying to find Dean Murray, who's been prolific in front of goal this season. The ball actually finds itself to Herrera before a great grand cross over the face of goal to Angel Di Maria, who netted his seventh of the season and still retains that top goal scorer crown so far after six weeks. So Manchester United under Ewan have been under a good revival of late, but they couldn't keep that going because a great shot from Oscar to make it 1-1 just about 10 minutes later set it to equal an equal scoreline. The Brazilian international there firing a great shot to make it 1-1 and probably over the balance of play what they deserved over the first 35 minutes of the game. Manchester United had another chance. Angel Di Maria hitting the post there just after the start of the second half, and they could have easily took the lead. But it was actually Chelsea who had the next key chance in the game. Ang Angel Di Maria is obviously doing well this season, but Cuadrado has been influential on that right side and should have really had a chance there. From the, result, from the corner, sorry, in the 82nd minute, it was Diego Costa who took the lead, the Spanish striker, Firing a shot from a resultant corner. And he has been two great goals for Chelsea in this game. They came out 2-1 winners and keep their assault on the top four. Our next game comes between Arsenal and Borussia Dortmund. Borussia Dortmund not doing too badly this season. Just running along quite nicely. Versus an Arsenal side who haven't won this season. And have struggled with their goal difference very, very badly. But new manager El has come in and said that this team are very, very capable of getting some points. And they looked like they might have done early on after 11 minutes there. Sanchez somehow finding himself in good space and firing wide. Royce had a free kick just a couple of minutes later. And that forced Ospina into, oh, sorry, Chesney into a great save. Ospina being the keeper this season for Arsenal. But new manager El electing to go for Chesney this season. But it was 1-0 to the home side Arsenal after 22 minutes. A great header. There from Mesut Ozil, not someone who would renowned for headering in goals, but he was pretty much unmarked there, ran at the right time and made it 1-0 to the home side. Actually, their first goal in some time. Their only other goal coming up against XRL Bobbitts' Chelsea earlier on in the season. 
Borussia Dortmund felt like they should have maybe maybe got an equaliser there, a one-on-one effort. But Blaszczykowski really had a really tame shot at the goalkeeper, staying pretty much straight. Another great chance for Royce there as the start of the second half started there. And really, he should have scored as well. This part of the game, they actually had some really good chances. But they were made to pay after a defensive lapse between the keeper and the centre-back there. Allowed Mesut Ozil to double his tally again for the season and the game with that finish. And now at this point, Arsenal score more goals than they have had in the first five games and cup this season. Jack Wiltshire, though, was to make it 3-0 with a great place to finish. And Borussia Dortmund will feel a bit hard done by that they were 3-0 down in this game. But one team took their chances and the other really had tame strikers in front of goal and probably didn't deserve it. But Albemiang was to restore a bit of pride to the scoreline for Borussia Dortmund with an absolute stunner. One of plenty of stunners this week. Wiltshire and Albemiang, two great goals. But it did finish 3-1 to the home side Arsenal. And now there's only one team in the league who has not won a game this season. Our final game comes between Atletico Madrid and PSG. PSG haven't won a game yet this season, coming into their... Uh, sixth game of the season, and Atletico Madrid nearly got into the lead there, Gabby, with that chance. Ibrahimovic, a bit of skill there to get away from his man. He had a shot, and you know what Ibrahimovic is like. He can score wonder goals, and that nearly went in there in the bottom right, left-hand corner, but just missing the post. It was, however, Atletico Madrid who would have, would have scored there, but somehow Fernando Torres, the out-of-form striker there, and he couldn't quite finish. It was to be 1-0, though, at the start of the second half. Some sort of team talk must have happened from Blacks to Hill because I think you know they they wouldn't be expecting to lose against the bottom of the league and they scored pretty much five minutes after the start of the second half there. A great shot from Gabby from outside the area. One of, as I said, a few goals that have been really, really good this week. Atletico Madrid, though, tried to double their advantage and for once Torres has put one in this is his first goal of the season and what a fantastic goal we've seen a good lob by his Spanish counterpart Rodrigo from Valencia so far this season but that was an absolutely fantastic goal a lob straight over the keeper and showing that he does retain some of his class PSG should have really scored here though in the 70th minute but you know what teams like when they're struggling for form and they're at the bottom end of the table. They cannot finish chances like that. Lucas could have really took it on in his own. He decided to pass it to the, over the face to Ibrahimovic and he should have scored. But he didn't and it was made to pay with Griezmann scoring and his goal there for the game. Making it 3-0. A good header from a corner and it was 3-0. We, well, we haven't got league tables for it, so we hope you enjoyed the highlights and you come back for highlights from Week 7's fixtures next time.